ultimate power! The man who is so dominant at the Indy GP road course wins there for the fifth time! Spoiler alert. I really apologise if someone <laughs> clicked on the video and didn't realise, but P2 Grosjean! It's two and two at the Indy GP road course. If he just had pushed the pass at the end, maybe, maybe, he would have had a sniff of victory, but Will Power, after overtaking Pato Ward, after Aaron McLaren SP, arguably didn't get... Don't that. talk to me right now. About the strategy. Um, Palo! No! Oh, no! You just Palo! reminded me! No, Palo! Our engine gave in. This is the race reaction for the Big Machine GP at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway's road course. And whoa, it was a race that had plenty of overtakes throughout, intriguing battles that were for the lead anyway. But then when a late caution came, when Alex Polo's engine blew up, it kind of, yeah, wow, I, I think led to some really close racing and crazy at the end. Yeah. But yeah. Stephen, initial feelings thoughts from the race um it was great i loved it it was constant action throughout um apart from the i think the last restart everyone's tires were a bit and everyone's like breathe <laughs> the last six laps was very thing before the last six laps was mental like you said battles for the lead throughout we had the drama with hinch hinchcliffe he can't help it. He's just slow. Um, <laughs> that's not. A I'm just. I'm just quoting, quoting Joseph Newgarden. If you got hate, <laughs> direct it towards Newgarden. But don't because Newgarden's a great guy. Uh, um, yes. Uh, so we had that. Then we obviously had the late restart with then Grosjean charging down Will Power. Will Power making the move on Pato early doors after the first part. Oh, great race. Yeah, it was. It was a really great race. And I know people are sometimes sceptical of the IMS road course uh, because originally it was uh, kind of built for F1, I think, in its early doors. And then um, since the early 2010s, it's been adopted. I think 2013 was the first one, uh, maybe 2014, uh, as part of the IndyCar series calendar. And obviously it has got a lot of run out thanks to COVID in the last. Yep. I think this is um, the fifth race here in <laughs> less than two a seasons year. yeah 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 uh crazy uh, just maybe one probably. too few many yeah but it, it was a great race it was enjoyable yeah. it had action it had overtaken it had battles for the leads it had strategy um kind of calls that really made it had you know moves through the field guys making their way up championship battle kind of really comes alive after today and we've got to be gutted but first point that we stay on Scott McLaughlin he looked at Marcus Ericsson last week and he went Sweden you have a your own space program well what's stopping New Zealand and he flew well did it get he got a little bit off he the ground. He didn't get as much air time. A little bit off the ground. They need to invest in their engines. Maybe they reached like lower or altitude. They were doing lower altitude testing. Yes, yeah. That's what Ericsson was just fully sending it into altitude. But bit. poor... And Jimmy Johnson still oh, had a great yeah. result today. But poor Jimmy was having a great... Uh, you know, was just doing the start of the race. And then Scott McLaughlin comes. Whee! flying in touches his tyre that he then has to slow off and gets overtaken by about three or four cars yeah we should do a, a little note on Jimmy though he finished I believe in the end P19 on the lead lap uh, best I, race in I any car to yeah. date his performances have been spectacular and you go well P19 isn't spectacular but it is a, a great result for Jimmy with his first race being First time being in a first time doing a race for the second time, if that makes sense. Well, yeah, because obviously the Detroit doublehead is a little bit different because it's literally the day yeah, after, bang, bang. so it's not really much time to kind of go away. Where you know, this was a real kind of benchmark of going, how will Jimmy improve through it? And the guy yeah. is working his absolute butt off, and I think he got fair rewards. 
um, this race and you know he's just going to keep moves. working he was yeah. making moves absolutely uh, for, for a rookie it shows clear progression in the right direction absolutely we're not we're not going well his season has been incredible this is a mega result looking at the other rookies but it's a great result for Jimmy and his yeah. progress and Jimmy is just for those people who are, are hard on Jimmy Jimmy is a genuine rookie to single seaters. He has never driven single seaters competitively in his career. He may be a seven time NASCAR champion, but that has absolutely no relation really to the IndyCar series other than the fact that Jimmy Johnson is an out and out racer. And he's doing this absolutely for the love of racing, uh, the opportunity that he's got to do that. But Wow, I mean, where Shall do we go we... on to the next rookie? Uh, in uh, Christian Lungard. Yeah. This is a race of rookies, apart from the man that obviously we have the race of rookies and then the veteran of the road course at Indianapolis. Uh, but we'll come on to him. Christian Lungard, uh, let me check exactly where he finished in the end. I think it was P30. Well, while you check it, while you check it out. Um, obviously, we'll talk about quickly. Lungard's qualifying performance yesterday yeah. was absolutely incredible. Now, I, I wasn't sure of the reason. It wasn't necessarily too clear on the broadcast, but I presume because the fact that we've got a triple header weekend with Xfinity there and the Cup Series. Obviously, the Xfinity race is after the IndyCar and the Cup Series is going to be tomorrow. Um, but yeah, I presume as it's a condensed weekend, they didn't have time to do the full qualifying stint. Mm. Um, so we only had a fast 12, but Lungard didn't only just make it to that fast 12. He also started P4 in a superb performance. But I mean, P13 is still an incredible result. It's not for a rookie. for me, but I believe it was P13. It, look, look it, that performance is still incredible considering, you know, it's his first, he's had one practice day at Barber. He's had a practice weekend here with the team and this is his first ever race. It's a great result for Rail Lemon Lanigan. And if he does want to come across to IndyCar, I know he was a vocal in interviews over the weekend that F1 is still the dream. Um but if he does want to come across, I think Bobby Rahal will seriously consider him. Yeah, definitely. He certain certainly wouldn't have hurt his hopes. Well I think this weekend. other teams would be looking at him and going, Oh maybe we could get him. Yeah, maybe a Dell coin because it looks like Roman Grosjean is going out. Mm. So there may be a, a position to slot with Alex Albon obviously being around the paddock this weekend talking uh -huh. to Dell coin as well. But back to the race we've just got on the screen. Obviously, it's just finished. Colton Herter is another man out there trying to, to recover from last weekend's disappointment. Uh, started P5, was in and around the kind of top for a long part, was a guy who kind of Looked like he was chasing down willpower. And again, Herter always seems to be this driver that, that never really benefits from the late course. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. But he's got another podium. Obviously, that will soften the blow. But still, you know, you want to be on that top step, yeah. uh, especially after last week. But at least he's got a podium finish. Um, but again, Colton Herter continues to just be... Uh, it's such a great prospect mm. in the series. And it's going to be exciting when the car and team all come together of where that great prospect turns into great championship contender. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it's time to address the uh, latest heartbreak in IndyCar. We've, we've suffered a lot this year. Obviously, just to name a few, Will Power in Detroit, not Reese Sarsen of the Red Flag, Joseph Newgarden at Road America uh, having engine... I know it wasn't engine problems. It uh, was, I think it was a transmission issue. I think it was through the gears. Yeah. Dropping back. And the latest victim, Alex Pillow. Oh. Literally, they were going through talking about Alex Pillow extending his lead to 50 points. Dixon has had an awful weekend and we'll just briefly touch on that. Very rare from Dixon to have a poor weekend, but this was poor. He didn't look anywhere close in the top 10. In qualifying, he pushed it and pushed it too far, was trying right on the cusp. And actually, if he'd qualified where he would have been just outside, 
he, he probably would have had a very good race today yep. and made good points on Palo. But instead... Too far back. He spun out in qualifying, started in the 20s, and never really got any sort of momentum in late in the race, lost out to Lungard and then dropped several positions again and only really benefited when Bourdais and Ryan Hunter Ray were taking themselves out at the end. Oh, I think it was just Bourdais pushing Hunter Ray off, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think more than anything else. Um, but yeah, Polo, he was literally going and saying, pretty much you could start to go, this is Polo's championship to lose, to now going, the championship fight is now blown wide open again. Uh, New Garden finished seventh. Pato finished P5 in the end, wasn't yep. it? Uh, Dixon was still, I think, just about in third place. 14, uh, yeah. Um, but he was... In the you know, standards, yeah. He's yeah. only about 30 points off. But he still gained points. Yeah. In terms of that, New Garden gained points. Ericsson again gained points. Still is the guy who scored the most points in uh, the NTT IndyCar series since the Indy 500. We repeat it because the commentary team repeat it all the time <laughs> because it just rams it down that Marcus Ericsson actually is having a damn good season. Um, but yeah, all those guys that basically New Garden would have been out of the championship. Ericsson would have been out of the championship today. Yeah. I would have said with four races to go, they've got too much, too much to do. It would have just been a three horse race. After today, is there? And this wasn't a race going into the weekend. I, Stephen was like, I, this is the first race I don't think I've predicted Pato to be on the podium. And we didn't think it through. And he pulled out a fantastic um, pole position lap. And a strategy again, we'll talk about it, I think, once we round off Polo. But talking about championship, Polo's gone, gutted weekend, but now moves into, I think, Pato is really strong on the ovals. Mm. And also Dixon... And I'm pretty sure Newgarden won one of the uh, gateway double headers last year, uh, last year out as well. Pato came very close, um, but he looked really strong out there. I think Pato is going to win next week and take the championship lead from Polo. Bold. But that's Bold. for next week. That's I for think next week. I, on a side note, because obviously it's an engine failure, I think it was on used engine. I think I saw possibly... So he won't have to serve a penalty. Maybe. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed for poor Polo. Because retiring is punishment enough. That would be doubly compounding. And we've got uh, this on in the background, the coverage. And Pato, he looks gutted. He looks absolutely gutted because he knew the win was there today. And they just got the strategy wrong. Starting on the primaries was the right move. And with Dixon making the early pit, it kind of meant that everyone pitted at the right time and those guys went on to the sticker reds far earlier than Pato thought he was because Pato mm. thought he was going to be the guy pitting first. And that is what really has cost Pato today, yeah. I think. Yeah. Um, which, you know, it, it, strategy, it's, it's so difficult. Like I said, if Dixon doesn't decide to kind of play the early cards and kind of force everyone into changes because he would cycle to the front if an early caution came out, then, you know, Pato's strategy could have worked today, but it's always a risky one going on the tyre that doesn't look having the slower tyre that you've got to run later in the stint. And he just lost too many places, didn't he? Yeah. On those, uh, on the primary the backs, stint. Yeah. Um, uh, but you say Pato in post-race looking very down. A man on contrasting that I saw a massive smile on, a massive smile on his uh, boss's face as well, was Roman Grosjean securing his second podium in IndyCar. I'm sure he thought the win was there, but he, he just looks like he's loving it. He doesn't really care. He's loving fine for it. And he was there, pushing wheel all the way to the end. Well, it's an all due respect to Dale Coyne Racing. We know they're a small outfit. They are the team that give young guys a chance in the series or give guys that their careers are stalling another shot within the series and who can really get a result on the day if it goes well. Well, Roman Grosjean, he's been given this shot by Dale Coyne to come over to IndyCar. He absolutely loves it. He's taken every opportunity and he knows, well, it's, it's already done. It's already announced that he's leaving Dale Coyne. The question is to who? 
We don't know that yet, but we can strongly expect that it's to Andretti Autosport. It's been heavily rumoured that it's the number 28 car to replace Ryan Hunter Ray. And going to Andretti, I know Andretti haven't been great the last couple of seasons, but it is a big team. It is a step up from Dale Coyne still, where he can regularly challenge for race wins if yeah. it all comes together. Yeah, definitely. But we probably should mention the guy have we got there who won the race <laughs> will power the guy just is so good at ims rail mm. course isn't he yeah just there's a reason why he's led about he's got the all-time lap record which is about 100 nearly probably nearly 200 above scott dixon who's like in second place with the most laps led at the indy road course he knows it he loves it and he dominates it like he did today. And I remember, I think Townsend Bell uh, in the commentary, it, they were asking, who's your favourite for the race? Someone was saying Pato. Uh, but then he was like, who's your favourite, Pato? And he's like, no, it's got to be Will Power. The stats are just there. This guy is too good at the IMS road course. And even despite the late cautions, the guy managed the race to a T. As soon as it was clear on it, he got ahead of Pato when Pato was on those primaries and he was on the sticker reds. He made the move early and then never really looked back from that point in on the race. He controlled it and it was a little bit like, obviously he started from pole in the Harvest GP uh, race one. I believe it was that he won here last year. Um, I think it was Newgard in one race two. It was either way, whatever it worked. Um, but, you know, once he gets out in front here, he just is so confident. And the only thing that could hold him, Hinchcliffe, um, you know, at the back of the field, trying desperately to stay on the lead lap because, you know, cautions can change things. It can allow him to gain positions and get points. There are no blue flags in IndyCar. It was frustrating the hell out of Will, but he kept his cool. His team kept him cool in that situation. And the cautions, he was probably lucky that Grosjean overtook Herta and Herta was the only one with pushed to pass at the end you could have because Grosjean had used all his up in the race and Grosjean basically just didn't have anything uh, to be able to. He had a very quick car and maybe with push to pass could have challenged that win. But yeah, it will would have been very difficult to pass here because he is just so good. Yeah, so good. And so good. He deserves a win this season. <laughs> yeah, he does. Uh, obviously, he's got that contract for next year, so pressure a little bit off. Uh, but he, yeah, he's been desperate for a good performance. A couple of races have been very scrappy this year. Mm. Uh, so a performance all coming together at last. Absolutely. And we said in the preview, you know, Stephen said he had a feel good feeling about Will Power. He predicted him to win this race. And when we were talking about Will Power in the preview, we said if there's any place he wants to bounce back after a disappointing Nashville, you know, with all the kind of stuff happened there, he's frustrated. He doesn't want to take his teammates out. These guys respect each other. That Team Penske, you know, group are such a close group of drivers as well on and off the track. Um, too close at times on track, uh, as Nashville would show. Um, but, you know, this was the perfect race for him to bounce back. And that is what it is. And you know what? I was expecting like an explosion of emotion from Will Power when he got out the car. But it just looked like a look of relief yeah. on his face. He was like, we got it. We got a win. I can still win in IndyCar. And it's so tough. And... That again moves him up on the all-time list. He is one of the kind of, I think I saw some stupid comments that are like asking Will to retire. Like guys are a long time retire. Will is one of the legends of the series, whether you like it or not. He has been one of the best drivers there. I know his past personality can be a bit Marmite for people, but these are racing drivers. Some people are hotheads and moaning in the cockpit. Some people are kind of cool and composed and just keep it chilled like Scott Dixon is. Uh, from there but what you cannot deny is Will Power's talent and that was bang one of Will Power's top performances yeah for sure absolutely uh, anything else to cover in the race or is that the race reaction because this is just um, the rawness of it all maybe a few last shout outs Rossi P4 very strong performance there 
Uh, is that one of his best results of the season, I want to say? Uh, unfortunately, it is. Yeah. It's pretty shocking. I say unfortunately because Rossi's talent, we know, merits should be for a regular podium challenger and regular win. But how it's worked with Andretti and how it's worked with his luck, it hasn't made out. But he started P10, I believe, and worked his way up yeah. to P4, just kind of slowly accumulated positions, uh, managed to get ahead of Pato Ward when he was on that primary stint and was able to hold him back for the rest of the race, yeah. which was important. Um, and maybe a last little note to Top Gun Racing. Uh, they started their first IndyCar race with R.C. Ennison, but unfortunately had to retire because of engine issues. But their first steps on their IndyCar journey... Uh, if not including bump, bump, yeah. Yeah, they finally started a race and R.C. Ennison just looked such a happy guy in the paddock. They were so pleased to be there. And I think, you know, new teams and new teams who come in and grow in IndyCar is fantastic. Obviously, uh, they're not a new team, but Junko's Racing are coming back um, next year in the series. Uh, we kind of discussed Top Gun Racing could be a team like Maya Shank who kind of slowly build up a part-time calendar into a full-time calendar. But yeah, it, it was great to see them out on track in a race and it will be great, hopefully, uh, fingers crossed for them, that they can build on this, learn from this. All these are kind of steep learning curves of the team and we can see them back on a race track. Uh, probably not in 2021, but hopefully back in, well, definitely in 2022, we'll see them on the racetrack, but fingers crossed for more than Indy 500 and an IMS road course. Exactly. Who uh, was your star performer? So my star performer was James Hinchcliffe. <laughs> yes, it was. Yes, it was. But I feel like I can't really claim victory. It is a null and void Bordet one. Bordet came 15th, but he did drive someone off the road at the end. Sebastian Bordet so was not a star I performer. can't give it to him. Uh, definitely wants. <laughs> and I think Katie in the comments, her star performer was Jack Harvey. We know Jack Harvey. <laughs> really? Yeah, surprise, because <laughs> it's her favourite driver. But Jack Harvey, P6, he had no push to pass at the end, defending from Ray Hall, and he did a fantastic job. We know he's so strong here. There was pace in the car, but he definitely didn't have the pace to compete with those front runners. So I think a P6 is a very good result for Jack Harvey. And for his last time at the IMS road course in pink Myershank colours. Yes, so it's still 4-4 four, four between us, but congratulations, Katie. You are now 4-4-1. Four, four, yeah. <laughs> Wait, does that mean Katie gets pied? Yes. <laughs> We've saved ourselves. We'll send a pie to Scotland in Katie's face. Um, but yes, okay. Rounding up thoughts of that race. Rounding up thoughts? Yeah, just just, just your final take. I've just been vomiting my thoughts throughout this whole thing. But yeah. I know you want me to... Concise vomit it. more. Yeah, vomit more. <laughs> vomit more. Spew all over them. They are saying, vomit, Stephen. <laughs> oh, uh, willpower. <laughs> willpower <laughs> is a winner in the NTT IndyCar Series again. He finally gets his win this season. Plenty of overtakes. Probably a last note. VK, our last winner there, he still looks like he's struggling. Hasn't been the same since that cycling accident. He's scratching accident. another note on here. Yeah, nice little scratch. Well, you finished. Oh, Put right, the notes right. aside. Well, I didn't want to leave VK apart. I should have left him apart because it wasn't a great day because he spun. But there was yeah. nothing to note. No, there wasn't a note, unfortunately. For Should we VK. talk about Ryan on No, let's not do that. Okay. Look, we'll, <laughs> well, come on. Okay. Will Power's done it with plenty of overtakes throughout the field. And the big key thing today, at points, it looked like the championship fight was edging so close to being in the hands of Alex Pillow, but racing is cruel. You can never, ever rely and rest on your laurels because at a moment's notice, man or machine can fail you. In this case for Pillow, it was machine forcing him to retire from his race, meaning big gains for Pato. Gains for Dixon, not as big as what he would have hoped, but gains for Newgarden, gains for Ericsson. 
They're all in it now. I put in the comments at the end of the last preview going, is Marcus Ericsson a genuine title contender? Well, I'll answer that for you now. With that Polo retirement, he damn well is because he's been so effective. He loves the ovals, but it's going to be, I reckon, gateway. I'm back in Pato to win, but the preview is going to be coming up on Wednesday. Uh, so we'll get our more thoughts of that ahead of it. But guys, let us know your reactions to that big machine GP at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Great race. Loved it. I have enjoyed the IMS road course races. And God, we've still got another weekend of racing next week. I love IndyCar. He loves IndyCar. You love IndyCar. And if you are new around here and you love IndyCar and haven't seen us before and want to see us before again uh, or see us again again, <laughs> what can you do? Click it like, subscribe and ding that bell. Ding it. Ding it. So for now, you Indy fans, keep racing. <laughs>